Welcome to our OSI video, created by Ben Badger and Seth Werfel. There are seven layers of the OSI model. The application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical layers. A common method people use for remembering these seven layers is what's called mnemonics. An example would be people design networks to send packets accurately. And another less common one would be all people studying this need drastic psychotherapy. Layer 7, the application layer, provides ways for applications to access network services such as network file transfer, message handling, and database query processing. It controls error recovery, data movement from sender to receiver, and general network access. Often, the application layer uses both a client component and a server component. One example of this would be using a web browser to access a web server of which both components would use HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. The presentation layer handles data formatting information for communications. For messages being sent out, it converts that data into a generic format in order to survive network transmission. Just like when your English teacher assigns a paper, you have to keep it in a certain format. When receiving messages, it converts that data into a format that the receiving application will understand. In essence, this layer enables the smooth transfer of data over various formats. This layer also handles data encryption, decryption, compression, and decompression depending again on the data type and receiving application. The fifth layer is known as the session layer. It allows two parties to communicate in what's called a session for as long as that session lasts. For example, if you're on the phone, the phone company has to keep your call connected on both lines. This layer controls starting up the session, data exchanges during, and the eventual ending of that session. During all that, it handles security, making sure that only the designated parties are allowed to be in that session. Another feature of this layer is that it can place checkpoints in the data, so that if communications during the session were to fail suddenly, only the data after the last checkpoint would need to be sent out again over the network. The transport layer manages how data is transferred across the network. To do this easily, it turns long streams of data into chunks. These chunks include features such as error checking to make sure the data stays the same once it's delivered. The transport layer also controls what's called flow control, which makes sure the receiver isn't given more data than it can handle. For example, you can't put more water in a glass than it can hold. At this layer are also the TCP and UDP protocols. The Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP, provides reliable, ordered delivery of a stream of bytes from a program on one computer to another program on another computer. UDP, or User Datagram Protocol, transmits data packets without error checking and as such can be unreliable. The networking layer is layer number three. This layer is responsible for two things, local addressing and routing. Routing is the path that the data is going to travel. It can be compared to TomTom, -tom. well, when it actually works correctly. It finds the quickest route to send the data while avoiding traffic. It will then store the route in its memory so it will remember the path it took in the future. The data link layer is layer number two. It is broken up into two sublayers: the MAC and the LLC. The MAC is the physical address of the network. When you go to www.yahoo.com, for example, that is the logical address. The physical address is the country, state, city, room number, etc. The LLC, logical link control, provides mechanisms that make it possible for several network protocols to coexist with a multi-point network. The data link layer also provides the functional and procedural means to transfer the data between network entities. It may also detect and correct errors from the unorganized physical layer. The physical layer is the first layer in the OSI model. It is relatively easy to understand compared to the other layers. This layer is made up of the physical components that provide the means to transmit data. Instead of using something called data packets to transfer data, it prefers to transmit the raw bits. It's basically the unorganized kid at school with all of his papers in a single pile. This is a summary of the seven OSI layers. Thanks for watching our video, and we hope you learned something from it.